Dude, excited. forget fishing podcast. Know, we're gonna Let's talk do music. a music podcast we're talk together. About music. I'm, dude, I, I am uh, I'm obsessed, man. Uh, I have been my whole life. Yeah, it's interesting. So I know I know that you are a songwriter and that you've written some songs, but tell me about that. How did that uh, How did that happen for you? And when did that start? <laughs> man, man, it it it's crazy. My love for fishing really started at the same time my love for songwriting did. It, it was all kind of happening when I was like eight to ten years old. It was kind of when all these things, and and it's weird because the two don't go together, you know. But it was well, like I was very whistle, passionate. whistle and fish. No I mean, doubt, John Prine no thought doubt. it went together. That's right. That's <laughs> right. But for for me, man, it was uh, they were like they both came into my life through my dad. He was always playing like John Prine and John Hyatt and all these great songwriters. But I would write uh, poems when I was a kid, like eight, nine, 10 years old, and then started playing guitar, um, at 12 and was just piece little things together. But it's just always been, I'm just intrigued by stories. And I think that's why I like doing the podcast so much. Like I love people, you know, hearing what makes them tick and, and their decisions on the water or what, you know, outside of the fish like this, this is awesome getting to know that about you. I, I just, and, and so the story behind a song was always so important to me growing up. I loved those, uh, like the MTV unplugs they would do or, uh, uh, growing up close to Nashville, we had a lot of singer songwriters. It's mm-hmm. like the Bluebird Cafe and that kind of stuff where you would go see these songwriters behind these massive hits or, uh, you know, in country music and they would tell the story. And that was just always so cool to me. Like yeah. that, that, that hearing where that came from and your brain, how did you come up with it's that? Really that was cool always amazing. See, it's cool to see the songwriters. Like when, 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 uh, my, I have a friend that I went to college with and he works for BMI and he entertains the songwriters and he has this, uh, yeah. he has this, uh, the Key West songwriters convention. You're familiar yeah. with that, right? Yeah, and so absolutely. So every time he would come in town, he's like, "Hey, man, come down and 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 I got a seat for you." You know, bring and my wife grew up with him too, so we would go down there and see him, and then we would get to see these songwriters perform their own songs, and then they would perform these others. They were their own songs, but you didn't know that they wrote these songs. That's right. And then they That's would right. tell the story about what it was that that made him write this song or why. And it was super cool. And then you listen to that song completely differently. Yes. Uh, from then on, you know, it's, yes. it's so cool. And then like with John Prine and Sturgill Simpson, like I didn't even know that they were friends. And then I'm going mm-hmm. through the credits one time and it's like, John Prine's the songwriter on this with Sturgill Simpson. And then after John Prine died, he left Sturgill Simpson, this Porsche. Yep, and, that's and, right. and it was so cool. And then he, he started recording his new album in John Prine's old studio. I don't, I don't know, just to put those two together and to think, man, I grew up listening to John Prine and I always had a connection with him for some reason. And now I feel this connection to Sturgill Simpson and to know that they have a connection to one another. It's like, well, I guess there's no, I mean, I guess I would, I gravitate to both because that's right. You know, because of the songwriting, I, I feel like in, in the music, all the music I love is intertwined. Like, like you're saying, whether you realize it or not, but then you start digging in, you're like, Oh, well, so-and-so plays on this. And they wrote with this guy. And like, it's all intertwined so much, especially that Nashville right. area, those songwriters, the good ones, they really tend to, kind of gravitate towards each other. And something that was so cool for me about Prime was the young guys. He always loved the ones that were making their mark, whether it was Jason Isbell, you know, yeah. he took Jason, he was, he was the, you know, a godfather for Jason's daughter. I didn't so know cool, that. man. Didn't yeah, know absolutely. And, and so he always gravitated to these young artists. You've seen him, you know, really, whether it's like Hayes Carl in Texas, or he, he always just, lended an ear to those guys would write with them would always help them out. And that, that was just so cool about John, you know, yeah. but I, I do all music's connected in some way. If you like somebody, there's a re- you'll love 10 more that they're friends with. You know? I, would, I would think that I could kind of see it in my mind that Sturgill Simpson goes to, goes to John Prine. And he's like, uh, John, I need some help. This song isn't funny at all. <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. I, need, I need you to help yeah. me make it funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Or, or, hey, John, I'm probably about to make half my fan base mad with, yeah. <laughs> with well, this album. And John's yeah. like, eh, yeah. Go ahead. You, yeah, yeah, you are. But I love yeah. it. Go for it, man. Yeah, go for it. That's right. That's, that's, John's that's what, just be you. <laughs> that's what I like about Sturgill Simpson right now is he's one of the few people that is willing to 
Put it on the line, man. He's just, do something totally he's just true different. to himself, man. Totally different. It's true to himself. I love the bluegrass albums, you yeah. know, the recuts of the songs. And then, but he lost a lot of people on that, uh, the, you know, the rock the album. Sound and, and Fury. But that's my favorite. Yeah, dude, it's great. It's great. It's fantastic. That's me. Like, I love it. I love whether he's doing twangy country or doing that. Dude, the songs, it's like I said, the story, those songs, if you broke them down and he played them on just acoustic, you'd be like, Man, those those are great songs, but the yeah. sounds throw everybody off. I think it's fantastic. Uh, I, I love I, it. I loved it, man. I, yeah. I haven't listened to an album as many times uh, as I have Sound and Fury, maybe any album. I mean, I turn that one on and drive and just, just yeah. go. But, I mean, it's been a long time since any artist has put out an album that I want to listen to from start to finish. I mean, most people it, are putting a, out singles now, you know? And, yes, and, yes. And that is a, that's almost like a like a Who kind of rock opera yes. kind of thing. That's you know? awesome. I just love yes, it. It's man. just got this, it's a com- it's just got this It's whole, a work. Yeah. It's no, a complete it work. Yeah, start to finish. You got to listen to it. You can't just take one song. You got to listen to it. Uh, yeah, it's, it's fantastic, so. man. 